So for our first 3D design project, we're going to do a dog tag here. Um, a dog tag is fairly simple. I'm going to go to Google, type in dog tag dimensions. So I'll go to images and here we have an image with dog tag dimension. So a standard dog tag is two inches by 1.125 inches. So let's start out by drawing that. I'm gonna start a sketch on my XY plane. And now I'm just going to use this rectangle feature. I could hit R on my keyboard to start that and then start at my origin and draw out. And I wanna be two by 1.125. One two five, and in order to get those to pop up I hit the tab button on my keyboard and I'll hit enter once I have this I could um, extrude this to be a certain uh, distance so I'm just gonna hit E on my keyboard and that's automatically going to go into the extrude function it wants me to select the profile that I want to extrude so I'll select the rectangle we just drew and I'm gonna go up and let's say a, a good dog tag is probably 0.2 inches. Um, new body, one side, zero degree taper, that's all good. I'm gonna hit okay. Now from this point, I have um, my general shape. Uh, I wanna come in here and fill it all these edges to make them nice and round. So instead of going into fill a command up here, I could actually just right click an edge and it'll actually give me this option to press pull or it'll give me this option to fill it. Either one, um, the press pull just gives you a option to fill it or extrude and it automatically chooses it for you. Now I'm gonna go around all the corners here, select all the lines, and if you noticed, I don't need to see that line back there. I could just click it through the box. It automatically shows it up. And now I could come in here and kind of estimate where I wanna be. So I can move this arrow in and out and see how all those edges move. So I'm thinking about right there is okay, a 0 0.20 inch um, radius. I'm gonna hit okay. So now once I have this, um, this dog tag keychain could go onto my keys, could go onto a chain, however I wanna do it, but I do need a hole at the top of it in order to, uh, in order to actually wear this. So I could, either right click the top face and go to hole, or I could go through the menu to go to the whole function. It's a lot simpler to just right click wherever you wanna do something and usually the option will show up. So I'm gonna do change my extents to all because I want to go through the entire object. And then um, a half inch diameter is kind of big if you think about a chain. I would say a 0.375 diameter might be best for this one. And then just place it wherever you think is best. If you want to center it, we could throw dimensions on this. So we were uh, we we're 1.125. Um, so I'm going to do 1.125 divided by 2. And that will center it for us. And now once that's centered, we could come back. And we could actually add something to this or subtract something from it. So now I could either add text or a logo, whatever I want to do. I'm going to show you how to do both. So the first thing I want to do is add text. So I could come into the sketch menu, go to text, click text, and it's going to ask me where do I want to put it. The top face is going to be the best bet. So I'm going to click on the top face here in order to put the text down. I... Um, it could either be standing up like this. I think most dog tags are sideways. So I'm actually going to come up to the view cube, use my left turn in order to spin it to the left. And I'm going to put my text down here because I'm going to put a logo on the top. So the thing with text in Fusion, and I don't know if uh, you'll be able to figure it out, but the only um, problem I've had with text is that when I type anything in this text box, if I want to use two lines of text, it won't let me do two lines. It'll only do one line at a time. So if you want to put like your first name, then your last name below it, you need to actually create two text figures. So I'm just going to put LT um, engineering in here. And it might 
blow it out this way so I could use this little circle on this uh, on this circle in order to rotate it so I'm going to rotate it so it's standing up now height wise I could hit this drop down and I could select from these or I could just come in here and start changing this around to till I see um, what I want so I go to point two and it's kind of near what I want. I want to go a little lower than that. I'm going to go 0.15. And that's kind of where I want it to be. Um, whenever you're doing text and you want to 3D print it, it's always a good idea to bold it because uh, it'll actually turn out a lot better when it's bold instead of just regular text. See how it thickens it? 3D printing is very um, temperamental with texting. So the other thing is italic doesn't come out very well in 3D printing and then the underline would just be um, completely pointless almost. Fonts also, um, I know it's, it's fun to use some weird fonts, um, but always think about the 3D printer has a nozzle that is, um, that is pretty thick when, it, when it, you're talking about printing this surface on, so this is two inches. If you, um, if you look at your thumb right now, your thumb is about four inches, so, Think about how small that text is actually going to be in uh, in person. So I'm going to actually just use Arial and leave it that size and bold it and hit OK. And now I'm going to extrude that. I'm just going to hit E on my keyboard, click my text. I'm, I always go to Home View to uh, extrude just because it'll give me a better view of what I'm extruding. So um, I have my object selected and my... Um, my object or my dog tag was going to be 0.2 thick so uh, I'm going to do a quarter of that so I'm going to do 0.05 and that's going to give me a good uh, a good text on there so LT engineering and I could spin this so we're in the opposite corner so we can actually see that now I want to put a logo up here I want to I don't uh, I don't necessarily want to put something that's going to be difficult for the 3d printer to print but um i do want something that's going to look cool so i could use the lt lion but i'd like to use something else so let's say um engineer which is google engineer that is not good so let's go to google.com now when we're importing anything to put onto a print that's going to be when we insert, it's got to be a SVG file. So whenever you're Googling something to find um, to find that file, and then let's go to SVG search. So flat icon, um, icon finder, free picks. These are all icons. Uh, icons are sometimes okay to use. An icon is pretty much just if you were on your desktop, what it would be is like almost like an emoji. Um, some of these would be cool to use. Some of them will be um, confusing. So let's do, let's see if they have Nike on here. Flat icon, did you mean nine, like, bike. Let's see if they have a bike. Let's make this simple. Bike, let's hit view. I think this is just and then SVG download an SVG format there we go so I don't want to customize it I'm just going to download it download options free download and then there we go bicycle.svg so now I'm going to go back to Autodesk I'm going to click under insert insert SVG and then I'm going to click this little folder icon select SVG file now I could go to bicycle.svg, where are we, bicycle.svg, hit open, and then click my uh, face that I want to place it on, and that should import it. Um, sometimes, right now what I'm doing is I'm zooming out, sometimes these come in very large, uh, and we could scale them down, that's not really an issue, because right, sorry. Right here on the insert SVG, we have a scale plane XY, so it's at one right now. I could type in 0.5 and then I'll bring it down a half 
0.25 and I could actually keep scaling it till I get to what I want. So I'm going to turn this, rotate it with my circle again, and then I'm going to move this till it's on my dog tag. So now once that's on there, that's, that's a pretty good um, scale for what I want. And I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to place that on there. So a lot of you might be thinking right now, why do we have to use an SVG file? Because that's a lot more difficult to find or um, it's not going to have as many options as you want. An SVG file gives us the option, I'll show you right now, it gives us the option to extrude and I could just click that bike right now and I could pull this up. If I were to use any other image file, it wouldn't have a profile already drawn for us. So we would, we could import an image, but we would have to draw the entire profile of it. So we're going to set this to 0.05, just like our text. And I'm going to hit OK and extrude that. Now at this point, I'm pretty happy with what I got. And um, this is where I want to save it and get it ready for 3D printing. Um, I, I have fielded questions about 3D printing. Uh, I, I talked about Tinkercad and Inventor and AutoCAD before. It, it really doesn't matter what program you use in order to model whatever, you're, whatever you want to get out of it. Um, it matters what file comes out of that program. So you could, pro you could uh, design anything in Inventor. Um, this is Autodesk Fusion 360. You could design it in um, AutoCAD or Tinkercad and you could 3D print any of that stuff. So in Fusion, in order to get the 3D printable file, we're going to go to this drop down for make and we're going to hit 3D print. So this says it converts the selected body to a mesh body and outputs to STL or a 3D print utility. So when you hit 3D print, it's going to give you a couple options here and yours might not look completely like this. It might have this refinement options closed. It might have multiple things closed. We, we kind of want to keep everything open so we could see um, everything that's going on. Maybe your refinement options are set to medium. Uh, that won't really matter. So it asked me to select what I want to 3D print. Um, usually you're just going to hover over whatever you designed, click it, and that's going to be your selection. Now you can't hit OK right now because it's, it's defaulting to outputting to a 3D print utility. We're not going to send it straight to a 3D print utility. We're just going to save the file, and then we're going to send it um, to wherever we need to 3D print it. So I'm going to uncheck send to 3D print utility. I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to save this as dog tag. And it automatically defaults to an STL file. The .STL extension is used for 3D printing. Every 3D printable file is, is sent to an STL file before it's sent to the 3D printer. So make sure that always says STL and then you'll save it. Once that's saved, um, something that Fusion doesn't require you to do to save that is save your actual file. So you need to come up here to the disk and save and then save this as dog tag. And then that's just going to save inside of your actual projects over here. So if you click this um, projects menu, then you'll have all your projects. And here's my dog tag that I just created. So that's everything for the dog tag.